La dolce vita, la joie de vivre, pure sweet, joy of life. I'm with my 91-year-old mum. She's a real legend. You wait till you hear some of her story. In this five-minute pick-me-up, I'll be reading from a book my mother wrote in her late 80s. The editor's note. The heart of this book is almost 100 letters written from Redcliffe Mission Station in the New Hebrides, now Vanuatu, in the 1950s. And from Ina's mission statement on Bougainville, now part of Papua New Guinea, in the 1960s. The letters were hastily written, often by a very tired author, who wrote what she thought would be interesting to family and friends. They certainly were not intended for publication and they clearly reflect the attitudes, language and usages of that time. While the letters have been edited and adapted, and explanations added wherever this has been considered necessary, we have maintained their authenticity, and they continue to reflect their original time, place and format in various ways, as would be expected. The Pidgin English and place names are also reflected the usage of that time. To assist the reader, some editorial comments and identifications are made within the text in square brackets or footnotes. People and places that appear on several occasions throughout the letters have also been placed in a glossary at the back of the book, along with a map of Bougainville in the 1960s for easy reference. Prologue. There was no hospital for the people of the small village of Raria in the mountains of Bougainville, territory of New Guinea administrated at the time by Australia. Each family had constructed houses about three feet off the ground, out of bush timbers with a leaf roof, bamboo plaited walls. Behind each house was a small hut that served as a kitchen, with an oven made of stones. Varitevi had settled on a mat on the dirt floor of her smoky cookhouse, amid the firewood and baskets of food, to await the arrival of her babe. As the first rays of light heralded another day, a new life began. Varitevi sighed contentedly at the realisation that the long night of anxiety and pain had ended. A wave of happiness surged through her, as she pressed her newborn son to herself. Then she lay back on the mat of the cookhouse. Her feelings of contentment and happiness were short-lived, for it soon became evident that all is not well. The women of the village gathered round. They could not understand what was happening, but they knew something was not right. Helplessly, they watched the mother struggle for life. In the early hours of the next morning, Varu Tevi's life ebbed away. Grief enshrouded the village. Relatives and friends banded together, demonstrating their love for the mother by doing their best for the motherless child. When Rariri had been a heathen village, the babe would have been buried with his mother, but now it was a Christian village. The heathen customs had been replaced with love and compassion, they would do their best for this little one, but how could they keep him alive? He was passed from one nursing mother to another in an effort to satisfy the hunger pangs that racked his little body. This continued for several weeks until it became evident that he would also die. He was continually crying and simply wasting away. The people of the village gathered and held council. It was decided to take him to the coast and the mission headquarters where they knew help would be available. Maram Doctor, as the missionary's wife had become known, will look after him. Gathering the little one in their arms, they began the long trek down the mountainside. The trail passed through dense jungle and 13 times they had to wade through a fast flowing river as it also wound its way down the mountain. Sometimes he had to be held high above the head of the one carrying him, 
to prevent the rushing stream snatching him away. Ruth, the national nurse assistant, saw them first. She rushed up the mission steps of the home calling, Maram, Maram, you come quick. As the soiled calico covering was gently pulled back to reveal the emaciated and near lifeless form of this tiny, dark-skinned babe, a prayer went heavenward. Dear God, can we save this one? Please help me. This prayer, uttered that day in 1963 on behalf of Thomas, was all too frequently the sincere and urgent cry of Margaret Watts missionary wife and nurse in this remote outpost. Over the next episodes, I'll be reading chapters from Mum's book. I'll break them down into smaller groups so that they fit into the idea of the five-minute pick-me-ups, that at any time you can just sit down and enjoy a wonderful story. My commitment to you is to upload videos every week, improving quality and content. How you can help is to share these videos. Click the subscribe button. And if you'd like to support the channel, because it does take time and money to do this, please click on the Patreon site where I'll explain more. La dolce vita, la joie de vie, pure sweet joy of life.